Guten Morgen Klasse. Welcome to the next unit. Next unit is going to be about die Familie. Die Familie is simply the family. Pretty simple. And what you're going to notice is a lot of these words are cognates and they'll be fairly easy to memorize and to learn very quickly. Okay, so this right here is going to show a couple of things. First of all, the vocabulary that we need to kind of describe our part of the family. So we have a couple words here. We have Vater, which looks like father. Mutter, which looks like mother, sounds like mother. Bruder, again, brother. I put Bruder here. That's okay. Schwester is a sister. Gross. Now, gross is a tricky one. Gross can mean big, but it can also mean great. It can also mean massive. So, uh, gross has a couple of different meanings. So, we might also use it for my big sister, my big brother, might be used as that. Um, okay, so klein is the opposite. Klein is small. Then we have net. Now, net's a tricky one to remember, but it means nice. Net. How can you remember that? It's always nice when your net is full of fish. Something like that. <laughs> All right. Dann haben wir gemein. This one's a nice one to say. If you want to tell somebody, du bist so gemein. It means you are so mean. Du bist gemein. Du bist gemein. Herr Dab, du bist gemein. Oh boy. Okay. So one thing I want to say is that when we're using these uh, adjectives down here, like gross, klein, net, gemein. Uh, sometimes they get uh, some special endings, just kind of change a little bit. Uh, and we'll go over this very simply, not very difficult, like uh, we have meine kleine Schwester, or we have mein kleiner Bruder. Now, this exists due to gender. So depending on the gender of the person you're talking to or talking about, will kind of dictate this. Just know that if you see klein, kleine, or kleiner, it means small, or little, or younger. Um, <clears throat> the same thing happens with other words like gross, like meine große Schwester, my older sister. Then we have mein großer Bruder, okay, my big brother. So I might say mein großer Bruder heißt James. Meine Große Schwester heißt Allison. Okay, ausgezeichnet. Okay, now for this next one, we're going to be going over some of the names of the people. Now this has all of the uh, different uh, names and, and whatnot. They're all here. Now, one thing is dealing with people. They are going to receive the grammatical gender of der, die, or das based on their traditional gender. Now, keep in mind that uh, nowadays, at least within Germany, there is uh, some allowance for different types of gendered languages. Because German, much like any other language, most other languages except English, is uh, gendered, which means that even nouns have genders. Um, so they are expressed grammatically. Now, this grammatical expression isn't always for everybody, but it is the way we have it. So. Let's look at it. the uh, picture we have here. Uh, also, das bin ich. Now, that's obviously not me. It's the girl in the picture. And the... Uh, if we're, so, we're going to use her as a point of reference. So, if she were to say, my little brother, what would she say? Good. Mein kleiner Bruder. If she were to say, my older brother, what would she say? Correct. Mein grosser Bruder. Now, if she were to say my big sister, how would that be? Meine große Schwester. And what would be the word, what would be the translation for meine kleine Schwester? Very good. Okay. Now, let's look at the parents. Now, the parents, there's a Mutter 
and a fater. And these are called Eltern. So Eltern is the word for parents. Notice here, it says meine Mutter and mein Vater. It follows the same rules as down below with mein großer Bruder and meine große Schwester. Okay, so uh, look up at the top. Meine Oma, Oma is how you say grandmother. Mein Opa is how you say grandfather. Now, there are a couple of variations on grandfather and grandmother. And the word is called, uh, you can either say gross eltern, or you could say, uh, no, gross eltern. We'll stick with gross eltern. So, uh, so you have eltern here, and now you're using gross up here as great or, or grandparents, right? All right. So you can kind of figure out what my uncle is, my tante, based on the placement in the picture and the fact that they're very, very similar. Uh, those are the words for them. Then we have my cousin. This word drives me crazy because it's spelled like cousin, but it's pronounced cousin. No clue why. The cool thing is, is it's spelled like cousin. <laughs> so, um, it's just easier. Uh, and if you look at the girl over here on the other side, uh, Cousina, Cousina, not Cosana, Cousina. So if you look at Cousina, you just add the E at the end of cousin and you get a Cousina. Okay, excellent. All right, so guys, we're going to be using the word Haben. We're going to practice this a little bit and then I want you to uh, do a little bit yourself as well. So um when we use these uh conjugations is what they're called i i won't fuss with the with the boring stuff just know that with haben you have an ending but you also have a stem now it's kind of like if you have a screwdriver and you have a phillips head or a flat head on it they can be switched around the screwdriver still stays the same in order to work but the heads can change or if you have a good set of socket wrenches they can change there's lots of them right so if you say ich habe, it means I have. Du hast, you have. Er hat, he has. Now, one thing is, is that er is used for any time you have one person and it's male. It can also be one item and is grammatically gendered as male. You also have z, which is she. Anytime you have one person who is female, that person will also be referred to in the same thing. So er hat and sie hat, okay? So anytime you have a group of people and you're including yourself in that group, like for example, uh, if I were talking about uh, our class, I would say wir haben, Eine Aufgabe. We have an assignment. Then I'm including myself. Wir means you're including yourself and everybody. Ihr is the equivalent of y'all. Now, with y'all, that is kind of friendly and familiar. You would not go to an uh, elderly home of, I don't know, veterans or government officials and be like, hey, y'all, can you get and move your cars? I need to move. You would not say that. You say, excuse me, could you please move your cars? Uh, so ear is used for a familiar type of setting, maybe to a group of friends, or maybe to a group of people that are younger than you. The last one is sie haben. Now, this particular uh, one is they, okay, is sie. Now the trick is, is understanding that this is they, but there's another word, sie, as we mentioned earlier, that is also she. So it's kind of tricky to keep it, them track. The main thing that I look at is the ending. There's a T at that one and there's an E at that EN at that one. So kind of complicated. It takes practice. So we're going to go ahead and practice it a little bit today. Okay, so let's go ahead and start with how do we use it? Well, I'll tell you. 
you just start with this. Nummer eins. Ich blank einen Bruder. Habe. I don't know why that's erasing, but... <laughs> so, ich habe einen Bruder. Now, I was able to tell that because it said ich. And usually, ich, ich verbs, or ich, when followed by a verb, that verb gets an e at the ending. Hans is one person. So, you would say Hans hat eine Schwester. Right? Same thing happens with Susie. Susie hat einen Vater. Nummer vier. Wir haben, wir haben einen Onkel. Very important. Mein Cousin hat, remember, mein Cousin, my male cousin, just one person, hat eine Tante. All right, so I'm going to erase those and have you do those yourself. Okay, now we're gonna go over a couple of the, uh, these new words. Now, when you're describing people in your family, you really want to be able to focus on uh, ways to describe them. And the reason is, is because it just makes things a little bit more interesting. You can say you have a brother or sister, but isn't it more fun to say, oh, they're so annoying. So, we're gonna go over that. All right, the first words here, we have gut. That one you might know. It means good. This one looks like bows. It's not bows. It's böse. Böse. Yeah? It's hard to say that O oh, umlaut at first, but you get used to it and it becomes böse. Then we have, oh, sorry, böse means mean. <laughs> mean. Okay. Uh, also evil. Evil. Net means nice. Mein Bruder ist sehr nett. Okay, aber meine Schwester ist sehr gemein. So gemein is mean. That mine at the end is kind of like mean, right? So sie ist gemein. Uh, meine Frau ist schön. Okay, what could that be? My wife is schön. Beautiful. All right, hässlich. Hässlich is ugly. Oof, that's a mean one. <laughs> Don't have a beer? Gross is either great or big or old. Any of those. In other words, it's just like this. <laughs> Bigger. Uh, Don't have a beer? Klein is the opposite. Young or small. Then we have schlank. Schlank is slender. Full schlank is, uh, back in my days, they used to say a special word, uh, husky. You might also say uh, sturdy. It's kind of a, a nice way to say, you know, not skinny, but sturdy. You know, you're a little thick. But it's not like a bad thing. It's just, you know, there. All right, next. All right, so on this one, I'm going to go through a, a short story and have you go through with me. It says, hello, guten tag. Okay, they're greeting us. Oh, that's so nice. Ich heiße Maria. Ich habe blonde Haare. So I have, what kind of hair? Blonde hair. You got it. Ich habe zwei Schwestern und zwei Brüder. So here's eine Schwester, Schwester, Bruder, Bruder. Two of each, right? That word zwei is in there. Wir sind eine große Familie. Now, are they an old family, a great family, or a large family? They're a large family. Mein Vater heißt Paul. So here's Paul. Uh, Paul. <laughs> uh, und meine Mutter heißt Pasha. Sie ist nett und hübsch. 
Okay, guys, welcome. Day two. Okay, so we're going to go over some new vocabulary. They're pretty easy to, to memorize, though. Um, we have the words here. Uncle. It looks like uncle. Pretty easy to remember, yeah? Tante. Has the word sounding like... It's like aunt. Tante. Aunt. Tante. Yeah? And how about cousin? Remember. Now, as I said yesterday, a cousin is pronounced cousin, not cousin or cousin. It would probably be understood, though, if you said it like that. Cousina. Cousina is a female cousin. Oma is a grandmother. You can also say gross wonter, a great mother. Opa is a grandfather. You can say gross opa. And we have schön. It's pretty. And we have alt. It's old. Now, when we're describing people, we can say things like meine alte Oma. Okay? My old grandmother. Mein alter Opa. My old grandfather. Meine schöne Tante. My beautiful aunt. Meine netter, well, that should be mine. Netter cousin. All right. Great work. All right. So we've gone over this before, and we're going to practice it again. What would we put here for numer eins? Go ahead and write out the entire sentence. Numer zwei. Go ahead, write out the entire sentence. Numer drei. Go ahead and write out the entire sentence. Numer vier. Go ahead and write out the entire sentence. And go on ahead and do numer fünf. Okay. So, here's a fun place. They all have names now. Strange. Okay, well, let's locate myself. Okay, not me, but our point of reference. Ish. So, wie heißt? What is the name of? Die kleine Schwester. Ah, did you guess Gertrude? Hope so. Okay, let's try this. Wie heißt die große Schwester? Ah, oh, Susie. Wie heißt der Vater? Der Goatman. <laughs> okay, yeah, he's a black sheep of the family, I guess. Okay, wie heißt die Oma? What was Oma? Good. Did you get her? Okay. Wie heißt der große Bruder? Very good. Wie heißt der Onkel? Good. Wie heißt der Cousin? Cousin. Okay, wie heißt die Cousine? All right, getting down to the last few. Wie heißt die Tante? Wie heißt der Opa? And lastly, wie heißt Die Mama, or Die Mutter, I should say. Die Mama is actually correct as well. Okay, so here's a few more new words for us to learn. So on these, there's a couple of them that will be very similar to words in English, but we just kind of have to be careful. Okay, so the first word is Freundlich. That means friendly. Friendly. Freundlich. It looks similar. Kurz is short or small. Lang 
is tall. Glatt is uh, bald. Lockig is curly, as in curly hair. Glücklich is happy. Traurig is sad. Klug is smart. Now this next one looks like doof, but it's not. It's doof. Big difference. What does it mean, Herr Dab? Dumb. Okay. Then we have sympathish. This one here is nice. It's kind of like friendly, but sympathish, like a good friend. Then we have the last word here, nervig. Nervig is annoying. So you could say, mein Vater ist nervig. Meine Schwester ist klug. Meine Mutter ist glücklich. Okay, so lots of different ways you can use those. Okay, so now for the next story, we've got, we're going to be focusing on this part of the family that you see up in the upper right. Meine Eltern sind sehr nett. Okay, sehr means very. Nett is nice. Aber manchmal, sometimes, nervig, is sometimes annoying. Ich mag meine alte Oma. I love, or I like, my old grandmother. Sie ist wunderbar. She is wonderful. Mein Opa ist auch toll. Also great. Auch means also. Toll, great. Ich besuche. Besuchen means to visit. Sie, them. Jeden Sommer. In North Dakota. I visit them every summer. In North Dakota. All right. Welcome in class to day three. All right. So here we are at this nice, wonderful picture. We will highlight the person of reference so we know where we're going from. So we'll do a couple of them, not all of them. V heist the Mutter. Good. You might fine. V heist the Kleine Schwester. Good. You might drive. Wie heißt der Onkel? Gut. Wie heißt, uh, so long, Nummer vier. Wie heißt der Opa? Nummer fünf. Wie heißt der Cousin? You get them all right? I sure hope so. Okay. Now we're going to use Hobbit again. So what I'd like you to do is to go through this and simply put the correct form of a Hobbit into this. All right, so let's go ahead and go through some of these. Let's start with the easy ones first. All right, um, we're just gonna start with the first line, just the top row, which word means tall. Did you guess long? Good. Which word means short? Very good. Which word means friendly? Very good. Which word obviously means bald? Okay. Now we'll go with the second row. Oh, there's a lot of them. How are we going to remember? Well, we'll work through it. it. Takes a couple times. What is the word for happy? 
It's glücklich. What is the word for curly? That's lockig. What's the word for sad? It's traurig. Good. What's the word for smart? Is klug. Good. What's the last, last phrases or last words? Sorry, last row. Uh, which word means dumb? Dolf. Which word means nice? Sympathisch. Good. Which word means annoying? Good. All right. Now we're going to be focusing on kind of the extended family. And we'll see if we can come up with some amazing words. Der Bruder von meiner Mutter heißt Johann. So here's the motor here, can't really see her, but the Bruder von uh, the motor heißt Johann. So their uncle heißt Johann. Er ist mein Onkel. Er kann alles machen. That means he can do anything. Meine Tante ist immer, always. She is always, oh, gemein. Oof, she's always mean. Sie hat immer, always, Probleme, problems, mit der Polizei. She always has problems with the police. Oh boy, what just happened? Mein Cousin heißt Larry. Okay, meine Cousine heißt Susanna. Sie sind nett. They are nice. Und sind in meiner Schule. And they are in my school. Crazy. Okay, guys, welcome to day four. All right, let's see if we can help you out on these. Which word here means, we'll start with the top row. Which word here means mean? Very good. Which word here means nice? Good. Which word here means good? And lastly, which word here means evil or bad? All right, now let's focus on the middle row. Which word here means beautiful? Good. Which word here means ugly? <laughs> yeah, hässlich. Okay, which word here means big, large, great, or grand? It's gross. Good. And which word here means small? Very good. Now, the last two. Which word here means slender? Right, schlank. Which word here means sturdy or thick? Full schlank. Okay. All right, so we're going to go through this. I'm going to have a couple of questions as a review. What is the name of the girl in the middle? Okay. So question number two, uh, what is the name of the father? Okay. Last one, what is the name of the mother? All right, great work. Now, where do the grandparents live. Loud out today. All right. So 
What about the parents? What uh, are the two words that describe the parents? What two words are used to describe the grandparents? Okay. All right. This is the last one. All right. So we have uh, the family here. What is the name of the uncle? Okay. Next one. What is the problem with the ant? Okay. How do, how does the main character, other than being related to them, how does she know about her two cousins? All right, well, that's it. Great work, everybody.